You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello kids and welcome to season three and episode number 125 of the Daily Beaver here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023 and uh, I'm looking outside my window and it's blue skies and bright sun so hopefully that will uh, keep up for the rest of the day here at the Beaver Lodge. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, he, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly, and looking sharp, I must say. Hmm. Okay, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a Tuesday morning nibble for you kids, but first... Let's say hello to Mr. Grizzly, who's taking a sip of coffee from his sense cup and ask him how his mental health is doing today. Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. Um, Mental uh, health-wise, jury's out on that one. Uh, Running on four hours sleep, so I'm very groggy at the moment. It's my second cup of coffee, and I'm not awake yet. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I am. And last night, I don't know if anybody tuned into the ASMR show, but I was just before I sat down to do it about 15 minutes before I sat down to do it, I had a full blown anxiety attack oh. and, uh, it was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I got to back out. I, I, I need, I, and I'll just, I'll just not do it. And then, um, uh, I decided that would, wouldn't be helpful to myself or anybody. So I managed to make it through, but I was much better by the end of it. But yeah, it was just, I don't know where it came from right out of nowhere. Um, wow. Just, just, I guess a feeling of being overwhelmed. There's a lot going on. Um, you know, uh, that I, I'm not going to necessarily get into like there's, there's things, things going on in, in my world, uh, that, that aren't, um, hmm how do I say it, aren't directly involved me, but I'm not directly involved. So it's not me personally that's okay. being physically affected by what's taking place, but I right. am being affected by it emotionally because it's someone who's very, very close to me. So yes. if that makes sense, you know, I don't, yes. don't want to, everybody yes, has sense. their right to privacy, right? So yeah, makes sense, but that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's adding to my, uh, uh, my lack of sleep and anxiety. Um, and, and I have, I have a lot of good going on right now. So, you know, just, it's, but I know that feeling when things are going well for you, but maybe not for someone you care about and yeah, you're preoccupied by that. 
Yeah, exactly. It's like I can't, I can't focus as much as I should on the good that's happening in my life because when things are good, you should, you know, focus on that and be grateful mm-hmm. for it. But at the same token, I'm just sort of, my mind is elsewhere with someone else right now and, and there's, there's nothing I can do um, to, to, to remedy the situation. Mm, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I know. Uh, it, it's tenden- tangentially related, but yesterday when you said focus on the good, um, I, as everybody knows, I'm specifically trying to lose weight because at Valentine's day, I'd weighed to the most I'd ever in my life. And, mm. uh, as of this morning, officially 20 pounds lost since Valentine's day. Oh, nice. Good for you. Yes. Yesterday I broke the 75 kilogram barrier. So I took a picture of the scale and then I posted it. Uh, now, um, somebody, uh, took the time to congratulate me would make a two point one, congratulate me. And two say that the scale was gross because it was a little crud around, around the, the lens. <laughs> Never occurred Not to gross, me to clean, clean the scale. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not like I eat off it. <laughs> I stand on it. I look down, I get off. Right. Yeah. So, um, but I, I took a picture of it and yes, around, uh, you know, the thing there's, there's some dirt and it's like, thank you for the congratulations. This is an achievement. I'm going to focus on point one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I mean, just like I, okay. Yes. Okay. Now that I see the picture that you pointed it out. Yes. I see that like around, Mm-hmm. The window mm-hmm. that says like this, it is dirty, but, um, thanks. <laughs> I guess I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, that, that thing, right. Where you can sit there and you can look at that and you're going, Oh, darn, gee, I can't believe I posted that. I'm going to like take that picture off and go take another one and like put a clean one mm-hmm. on. Cause I don't want, it's like, why? The, the, the cow's already out the barn door, closing the barn. It's not going to make a difference now. Just leave it be. Cyborg, I looked at it. Oh, I guess it is dirty. Okay. Well, you know what? Too bad. Um, that's okay because uh, it may be dirty, but uh, yeah, yesterday it was, you know, 18 pounds. So I was like, mm. you know what? Good. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I'm going to focus on the 18 pounds. You focus on the dirty. <laughs> Life is dirty. Life is messy. Um, that's just how it is. And, and you know, something is, is trivial. Like my apartment right now is a pigsty. And I, you know me, I'm, I have OCD. It's I, everything's on the floor at your place. Yeah. Well, um, I've been so like the whole weekend, I had all these things I had planned to get done and I had no energy. It was like, I'd get up, I'd make something to eat. I'm like, I'll get to the dishes later. And then it was like, I need to take a nap. I just, I was just zapped for energy this weekend. I think it's just uh, uh, a lot of emotions catching up with me. Uh, you know, uh, the, the duopoly, the duopoly, would that be the, the, the dual, you know, there's the goodness happening and there's this duality, the duality. Thank you. You know, I'm supposed to be celebrating and grateful for all this good goodness in my life. Yet I've got this, you know, over here, I'm worried about somebody and it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's exhausting me. Um, you know, at one point in time that would have put me into serious depression, but, um, with, with, uh, medication therapy and, 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 uh, different attitude, uh, I can work through it much better, but the anxiety still takes control when it wants to take control. And that can be no fun whatsoever. But, hey, you know, Hey, it is what it is. I'll, I'll, uh, soldier on through as I always do. Because that's what you have to do. Tomorrow's another day. Today's a beautiful sunny day. It's going mm-hmm. up to 24, so I'm going to enjoy every little bit of that, right? Right. So find gratitude where you can find gratitude. I guess I'm getting philosophical and, and kind of into ASMR mental health chat territory, but that's just where my brain is this morning. So, you know. Yep. Yep. I hear you. I hear you. I have days like that. It's, yeah, I hear you. Well, hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun this morning and uh, give you a little energy, my friend. Let's hope so, yeah. Um, headlines. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Um, today, uh, the big thing that will be happening today, of course, it's May 23rd. So uh, former Governor General David Johnson uh, will be releasing his report, special rapporteur, into uh, oh, okay. what he has found out has gone on uh, in uh, – uh, with regard to election interference, um, I don't know. We don't know 
uh, if he's looking specifically just at uh, those last two elections in China or if he's looking broader because, uh, as uh, I keep on referring to uh, Michel uh, Juno Katsuya, who is a former senior CSIS officer who uh, keeps on testifying and saying on TV to whomever will listen that uh, they've been warning prime ministers and cabinets for decades, like 30 yeah. years about this, and <laughs> nobody's done anything uh, serious in his opinion yet. Um so this will come out. Uh, we have people like um, Arthur Wilczynski, who is uh, you know well known in those circles, but uh, appears to be much more conservative leaning from the commentary I've been seeing uh, on Twitter, uh, saying like nothing less than a pub full public inquiry will do, uh, or else you know lest the confidence of Canadians in their elections erode further. Um, but the confidence in our elections have not eroded. All the polling shows that like over 70% of Canadians <laughs> think that our elections are quite fine. Thank you. So it's the people who are spinning that our elections are somewhat now somehow fraudulent. I mean, you've got some people from the UCP and conservatives talking about tabulation, <laughs> uh, tabulation stuff, saying like trying to, do that dominion thing, right? It's like, oh, these vote counts, it's like, all they do is tabulate. You're not even voting with these machines. Um, so I don't know where they think they're going to go with that. Um, now you have um, people like uh, Andrew Coyne, mm -hmm. again, who is still not openly declaring his conflicts of interest and who the Globe and Mail keeps on publishing on this subject, even though they are very painfully aware of his conflicts of interest on this subject uh but he's basically it's just yep the kitlin does saying that andrew coin is already casting aspersions on the report saying that johnson just ticked boxes and didn't talk to conservatives he should have like he knows this uh and uh and andrew coin for some reason for a journalist is astoundingly uncurious yeah he wants it to be only about the last two elections and only about china or else johnson has lost the plot if he makes it about more, it's like, uh, uh, excuse me, but again, the CDC and your CSIS people have been saying that this is going on for 30 years. So if the subject is allegedly foreign influence in our political system, shouldn't we attack the foreign influence in our political system wherever it comes from? Or, oh, or, or, or are we making this now just a Trudeau and a China thing? So we'll deal with foreign election interference from China, but from Iran and Russia and North Korea and everywhere else, well, it's fine. We don't need to do anything mm -hmm. about those, according to Mr. Coyne. I don't know what it is. Like, And like two days ago, again, he said something where he was like totally bang on. He's got this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing where he's like completely bang on. But as soon as it involves anything having to do Trudeau, he loses his mind. Is it TDS that he's suffering from, Trudeau derangement syndrome, or, or, or just, or uh, like, what's, what's or going he on? he really wanted Pierre to be his daddy and not, or <laughs> he's yeah, tangentially uh, related. He's mad that, yeah. that it, anyway, I'm trying not to bring yeah. Sarah Queen into it because she has done nothing wrong. It doesn't involve doesn't her. doesn't involve right? her. So. But I mean, it's like, is he mad that Sarah was Trudeau's daughter and not him, his son, instead? I, I, I just don't know what it is. There's something there. I just, yeah. But as soon as he, sees, he sees the word true, he just loses all reason and mastery of himself in public and puts his face and name to it. And he's proud oh, of yeah. it. I don't get it. Mm. I, I just don't get how somebody who can be so right about so many things so many times is so off on this one, just has a total blind spot. These articles are motivated by something else, and I don't know what it is with Andrew Coyne because he's just completely inconsistent. But in the name of national security, this guy who's supposed to be very serious and comes across as ridiculously dour really just wants to it, – it's almost like the COVID thing, Right. Mm. It's like, yeah, let's keep China quarantined so that China doesn't spread it, but let's let everybody else just show up to every public event with no masks and no vaccinations and let them cough and sneeze right on you. This is basically what he's advising if this was a public health thing. 
Mm-hmm. He said, we only need to look at it from one country. The rest of the world is fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what's going on there. Yeah. So, and again, right, we're dealing in a context, yes, we're, the communist government of the People's Republic of China is super shady and corrupt and horrible and, you know, they torture and, you know, commit genocide and, you know, and they're expansionist and all that kind of stuff. We get that, right? Mm. But there are over a billion people in China. Not every single person is corrupt. And there was a historical element with Pierre Trudeau, father, particularly in relationship with China when it came to opening up China to the world. So, right? And again, these donations were made at 2016 when in 2012, we signed a 31-year agreement that came into force in 2014. Yeah. So in 2014, we were okay with 31 years tying ourselves to China. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's, off a part of our sovereignty to do it. And two years later, looking back with 2023 eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now, it's because we're the conservatives did it, so it's fine. You know, when we do it, it's okay. When you do it, it's bad. That's their, their, their mentality. But for their story to be true, right, is that every single person living in China, every yeah. single one, is completely corrupted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all one point. Four billion. Yeah, all point one point four billion. And it is completely impossible that there would be two people in all of China yes, who are businessmen. Yes, thought it was a good idea to recognize the man that opened the door. Yeah. With a scholarship of all mm-hmm. things. Um I don't know. And yes, maybe they thought it was an attempt from them to influence. But on the other hand, the people from the Trudeau Foundation. Like, what, what have we been doing? What has been our policy all that time? Oh, well, you know, if we just continue doing trade with China and liberalizing trade, then China will, you know, participate in the global world and start adopting global world values, right? We were doing all of this thinking that we could politically influence China. I guess. <laughs> so when we're like sending our former Supreme Court judges over to China to help them develop rule of law policy, when we're sending foreign aid to China, what all of that wasn't us trying to influence their political system. But, yeah, but one, you know, but we're okay. One hundred forty thousand dollar donation to a scholarship title is completely upended our democracy. Mm-hmm. But every Team Canada mission we sent down there didn't. We're all trying to influence each other. Of course. Now, I understand China takes it to another level with its police stations mm. and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, but I mean, the specific thing that everybody's losing, they're losing their minds more about a $140,000 donation for a scholarship fund than the actual police stations. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you got to have the outrage machine going 24 <laughs> 7. So. The rage I mean, farming. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be polite. I'm gonna. I'm gonna censor myself. I, I was gonna go on a rampage there, but I decided not to. I'm not gonna go on a rampage. I'll be polite this morning, even though I am. I am angry and fired up about it because it's like it just never goddamn well ends with these fucking people. It never ends, and Flood they just the keep zone. picking at the same scab constantly. Flood the zone. Flood the zone flood the public square with so much BS that you liquid BS that you're going to need whip hated hip waiters. Yeah. That go up to under your armpits. Yeah, that's exactly what it <laughs> to is. Muddle through it. And once you get tired of the smell, you decide, Oh, well, I'm going to leave the public square. And now while well, all the cats away, so the mice are playing. That's the goal. It's to exhaust us so that we leave, that we check out. Hmm. Conservatives only win if it's a battle of the bases. Yeah. They have the bigger base that will show up every time. We have the greater numbers, but most of us are somewhat apathetic. That's the or, problem. Or believe that, or some of us are still sleepwalking through life, believing that, well, well, you know, whether the conservatives or the liberals win, we'll be all right ultimately. It's like, no, 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 these are not the same conservatives. 
These are not these are not Joe Clark's conservatives. These are not Brian Mulroney's conservatives. These are conservatives in name only. They are reformers, and they are ruled by Christo fascist Christo fascist religious right, and they will strip you of your rights. They will do it. If you give them the opportunity, they will turn back the clock to 1935. Yeah, Progressive conservatives are pretty much no more as a political entity in Canada. There's been a hostile corporate takeover that's been taking place for like since 1995-ish, 1993-ish yeah. going on. It's like it's been a 20-year slow incremental hostile takeover and that's it. Exactly. They are Republican conservatives or, you know regressive conservatives or you name them what they want but they yeah they are not the ones that you can leave unsupervised with a pack of matches and sleep soundly at night just no no they're not um so this report's going to come out everybody's going to lose their minds no matter what he says doesn't it, um, no exactly it doesn't matter a whit what he says the conservatives have already made up their mind they've already decided about this and Even if he recommends matter. a full public inquiry, they're still going to do it. Oh, thanks for the public inquiry, but you were still compromised, and we're still going to poop on you. It doesn't matter what he says. Right. It doesn't matter. And if he, and if he doesn't recommend it, then, oh, boy, watch out. Because it is going to be like DEFCON 2, maybe 1. <laughs> it's going to, like, Vesuvius is just going to go. Pfft. Yeah. Right. Um, so, um I'm guessing that this is suspected to be predicted or scheduled to be released somewhere around noon uh, today. Um, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that because um, there's going to be drama, drama, darlings, drama. Um, all right. Uh, wildfire update. Uh, rain started to fall in Alberta last night. Uh, it fell in pretty much every region of the province except the far north um, not enough uh, but much more is forecast for today uh, we are now down to 71 burning wildfires I think yesterday we were about 90 uh, mm. with 20 of them out of control yesterday I think it was about 24 23 uh, so I mean still bad but better uh, mm -hmm. because I mean if you're fighting 71 firefighters or fires rather than 90 maybe you have more people to put on the other ones uh to help uh with that but uh still about ten thousand evacuees and um there's uh, still a high risk uh of more fires particularly in the northern northern region of alberta and the eastern slopes of the rockies so if you're living in that area or if you have people that you care about that live in that area uh please tell them to uh pay close attention and uh, please remember if uh, anything is going out out there where there's some power outages or things like that and uh, people still have some uh, cell power um, remember if they want to keep up to date there is a website that's cbc slash light l-i-t-e i believe it is and mm -hmm. that doesn't have images whatnot so it's very less demanding on bandwidth and can keep uh, you can keep getting information uh, on uh, if you don't have a lot of battery power uh, coming in. So um, remaining on your cell phone or on your devices. So uh, if you have people living in the area and they happen to be out of power, uh, let them know that that exists so that uh, they have a man way to keep up to date with what's going on. Uh, because when the evacuation uh, orders or alerts are uh, put out, uh, it's time to actually follow them. Don't, don't ignore them. Don't disregard them. Because again, this is so big and people are being dispatched here there and everywhere and uh there's lots of uh different fronts on which to fight that uh, if the evacuation team comes around the first time they might have to have time to come around a second time to help you if you stay so please please take uh, the warnings and the alerts very very seriously uh, all you need is a sudden change of wind and then fire behavior just changes drastically all of a sudden in like a couple of, in a matter of minutes so, and uh, yeah and you're done. So uh, please. Did you uh, did care. you happen to catch uh, Arthur Pawlowski or Pawlowski or how do we pronounce his name again? Uh, raging on about uh, he wanted to say he thanked the Lord for the wonderful Florida-like weather they were having in Alberta, and then wanted to try and emulate Alberta's uh, uh, sorry Florida's uh, politics. He wanted to bring that into Alberta. I mean they're 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 saying it out loud now, which leads me to this um, video clip that I have from uh, this is Frank Zappa on the Charlie Rose show from 1988 
And uh, okay. I don't know if you've seen this. I probably have because I used to watch Charlie Rose pretty religiously before the Me Too stuff, and he went down on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's he was also great a couple. Of, but... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. A couple minutes of this clip. <clears throat> this is Frank Zappa talking about the religious right wing in the United States of America and evangelicalism. Media is turning right, and I think that uh, many of the get into office have gotten in there by wearing a you know a pseudo middle of the road kind of a costume and then lean toward the right when they find out the right is paying the freight once they get into office i let's dr let our minds drift back to the early days right before reagan uh, made his big run there was a deal made between the fundamentalist right and the republican party literally purchasing the platform if you stick the prayer in school Money, the land of milk and honey will flow yeah, in your direction. Is that any different than politics of the Democratic Party, in which you know all kinds of different interest groups had certain things it they wanted to very, do? It is very different. It is very different because it is so focused and it is so wealthy and it is so protected. So much, I think, that it has been the ruination of the GOP. You know. GOP now has, as they say... The grand old party. That's right. Enterprisers on one side and moralizers on the other. I'm with the enterprisers. Let's yeah. get... You know, so let's you get... Can this. Can no, no, about I'm, 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 so that was just a couple of minutes, a minute to, and uh, 17 seconds of a four-minute clip from the Charlie Rose Show from 1988 where Frank Zappa was telling us exactly what was going on then. He's referring to... Exactly what is... Yeah, Robert exactly. Shank, that clip you showed a few weeks ago, he's referring that deal specifically. This, this has all been going on for years. In 1985, he said something very similar three years prior to that interview. And uh, that's a 15-minute clip. I'd have to dig, it, dig around to get the exact one. But, I mean, he, <clears throat> he tried to warn us. And, and it wasn't just Frank Zappa. It was a lot of other artists. Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, and Chris Christopherson, when they did The Highwaymen, mm -hmm. they were being interviewed, and they said basically the exact same thing. They They've said been hiding this, it in plain sight. Yes. Yes. The religious right are trying to take over. If you think Gilead is a work of fiction, well, Gilead in, in the book, The Handmaid's Tale, is meant to be a work of fiction based on true actual events happening around the world when Margaret Atwood wrote it. She said that herself. She said everything mm -hmm. in that book... The reason why it's so scary are things that have happened before at some point. That's right. So it was all based on a certain amount of reality. Then she put it together in her own story. But the problem is these evangelical extreme right wing, what do they call themselves, social conservatives, whatever. Uh, they want to use The Handmaid's Tale as a manual. Mm-hmm. And they're doing it mm -hmm. right in front of us. Mm -hmm. And if you sit back and think everything's going to be okay, don't worry about a thing, everything's going to be all right, this is the one time I'm going to tell you that Bob Marley was incorrect. You need to get up off your duff, get to the polls and vote and let people know this will happen if you sit back and let it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, and I'm directing this specifically at Alberta because Pawlowski, who has the premier in his back pocket, clearly because she has a thing for pastors, and I'm not railing on religion. I'm railing on bad people using the, the, the disguise, the yep. veil of religion oh, yeah. Yeah. To, to force you to do what they want you to do. She's, excuse the expression, but she's got a white on for pastors. Yeah. Yeah. A big political white on for them. Um, you know, and, and when I say they're hiding it in plain sight, like I'm going to use an example, like where it leads down to, but I'm, I don't want to talk about this guy more than this example because I want to focus on Pulaski. Mm -hmm. uh, but remember Andrew Tate, mm -hmm. right? He posted this thing yesterday. And when I'm saying they're hiding it in plain sight, they're hiding it in plain sight, right? I mean, he's out there and he's going, it starts a poll. When she loves you, she will ask your permission for basically anything. Quote, hey, baby, can I go to the store? Hey, baby, can I watch a movie? Hey, baby, can I play music? Okay, this guy wants a pet. 
Mm-hmm. I don't want a person, but they're hiding it. Like he's put, like, this is virtuous. This is like treating women like this is virtuous. It's the way it should be. It's being a man. It's like I'm saying, like, hey, baby, can I reenact that Farrah Fawcett scene in the burning bed? No. Yeah. Hey, baby, isn't it your bedtime? Why don't you just um go to sleep? Yeah, How about we ask you permission for those types of things, right? So you got this Pulowski guy um, that he's he's on the war path. Oh, yeah. He is on the warpath. So this is the thing I saw when you mentioned it. Um, He is going to have a press conference in Edmonton at noon tomorrow. Tip, I will be revealing the whole story of my interactions, including my phone call with the Premier, Danielle Smith. I will be having the press conference on the steps of the legislature in Edmonton, yeah, because they won't let you in at noon, Wednesday, the 24th of May. I believe it's important for Albertans to learn the whole truth about what took place. Okay, number one, I mean, Pawlowski is not where we're going to turn to for truth. However, however, this is a Donald Trump Michael Cohen situation. Both of them have reputations as liars, but oh, yeah. one of them has receipts. Absolutely everything Michael Cohen said has receipts. Pazlaski, he's a turd. He's a piece of shit. Super mm-hmm. polished piece of shit. But he's got receipts. He's got receipts. She made a promise. She promised him that nothing bad would happen to him. And then she found out that she can't do anything about it. And given that he's facing potentially life in prison, which he thought he was going to get out scot-free, well, all of a sudden shit got a little real, eh? Oh, yeah. A little fast. Because all of a sudden he realized that uh, dear Danny, who has a white on for pastors, allegedly. Mm. Hmm. Second, it gets a little sticky for her. Well, oh my God. Well, what a, the pastor, she leaves him twist in the wind while facing life. I don't understand why Arthur wouldn't be too happy about that. I mean, and he did mention in that call that, um, well, um, um, she wasn't keeping her promises, so he felt he needed to swing. And he's the one that felt at that time that he needed to record that phone call. Again, people following the Putin compromise playbook. Oh, this is going to be, I mean, again, I'm saying this is going to be fun. This is going to be a disaster. But they're taking each other out. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> yes, it's 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 the train wreck we all want to watch when we know we shouldn't. <laughs> Hands over the Pretty eyes, much, yeah. and then open up yeah, the fingers yeah. and go. Yee. <laughs> That's what's. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. I cannot look away. I cannot look away. And uh, speaking of this. Uh, it seems that Pawlowski is not the only one throwing people under the bus, uh, because on May 18th, the day before my birthday, in CBC, Alberta Premier Smith breached Conflict of Interest Act, says Ethics Commissioner. Now, the UCP, now the Ethics Commissioner said that, well, there is no trace of any email from her or her office to actual prosecutors, so the UCP took that one, and Kean took that one, and put all these press releases out. See, I've been cleared and CBC lied and CBC owes just an apology. And it was like, um, no, uh, the ethics commissioner said, okay, maybe she wouldn't be able to find that email, but you did, uh, also, uh, I believe restrict that, uh, search that you put out for the emails up until December 31st of last year and only on government email. So nothing on WhatsApp or all those little encrypted mm-hmm. things that you used to send messages to each other, you know, when you don't want us to know, right? All those little things, those didn't get searched. So I'm sure there must be some emails, but well, the search was only put so very, very narrow so that when the search came up with nothing like you knew it would, then you can claim victory. And you thought we did see it happen. Mm. 
<laughs> anyway, so uh, it seems that the ethics commissioner, Margaret Tressler's probe began on March 31st after a member of the public asked if there were ongoing investigations into whether Smith pressured cabinet members or employees of the government in relations to the Coots border blockade. In her report, Tressler said three questions arose. One, did someone from the premier's office send an email about the COVID-related prosecutions to a crowd prosecutor? Again, only looking for emails. The mm. ethics commissioner was, and nothing else. Very, very narrow. Very, very uncurious. Was it improper for the premier to discuss Street Pastors Pulaski's criminal case with him? Uh, I think we know the answer to that one. Did yeah. the premier interfere with the administration of justice in her interactions with the minister of justice and attorney general in his role as attorney general or anyone in his ministry in relation to the COVID related prosecutions? And that's really the question that matters in this one, because mm -hmm. that's really the only thing that could damn that damn her somewhat if she did something wrong that the ethics commissioner is going to decide to look at just that tiny, tiny little sliver. Well, Quote, in my opinion, Premier Smith contravened Section 3 of the Conflict of Interest Act in her interaction with the Minister of Justice and Attorney General in relation to the criminal charges Mr. Pavlovsky was facing. Ah, in January, CBC News reported that a staffer in Smith's office had sent a series of emails to the Alberta Crown Prosecution Service. Trussell wrote that she had found no evidence of emails and could only come to the conclusion, based on the evidence that I have, that no Crown prosecutor was emailed directly about any of the cases. Uh, let's fix that for you. I could only come to the conclusion based on the evidence that I sought. Yes. That no Crown, not the evidence that you have. Because you didn't so. actually seek out. It's the, it's the appearance of an investigation when they exactly. really didn't but do anything. But still, still, the appearance of the investigation still rude that she broke the law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they went out of their way to find it like she didn't. And it's like, no, nah, we still, no, nah, she still did it. When it came to discussing Pozlowski's case, she wrote that while Smith's telephone call with him was not a matter covered by the Conflicts of, Conflicts of Interest Act, ah, oh, how convenient, it was a breach of principle that members of the Legislative Assembly should not speak with any accused person about any ongoing criminal matter before the courts. So, it wasn't part of her scope, mm. but she still felt the need to answer that. And again, let me read that because people go, well, what's the difference between Trudeau and SNC? In well, this, seen Daniel Smith again, right? When it came to discussing his case, it was a breach of a principle that members of the Legislative Assembly should not speak with any accused person. The Prime Minister spoke to the Attorney General or Minister of Justice, same person wearing the same hat, within the context of a deferred prosecution agreement law that existed on the books. Written by, who wrote that law again? Stephen Harper's suspect. conservatives. Yes, the, the initial version, but that's yeah. not the version that passed. No. It didn't pass. No, they didn't get to pass it to uh, Parliament. To, uh, it, so it came into the first liberal budget uh, right. while right. Jody Wilson-Raybould was the justice minister. Yeah, right. Now, that's I'm not sure point. if she wrote the law or somebody else wrote it and then got put in or whatever. Like this, But I'm guessing it should be her that wrote the law because for prosecution specifically is a justice thing. Mm. So... Uh, yeah. So, but it was included and it passed and it was a law. There is no deferred prosecution agreement law in Alberta, number one, and there is no deferred prosecution agreements uh, for wanting to uh, incite people to have another Alamo. <laughs> deferred prosecution agreements. This company did some very, very very bad things and we could like sanction the company and which would force the company to go bankrupt or move and we'd lose all these jobs and people's pension retirement. So we're going to do something else instead. Um, this is, this guy says like, uh, this was an onward Christian soldiers guy. Oh, Not yeah. the same thing. Not the same thing. Right. Then Smith responded um, that she always sought um uh, wrote that she had always sought amnesty for those charged with non-violent COVID-related offenses and violations during the pandemic. Well, that was not the case for Pozlowski because yeah. it's mischief and not mischief for property, but mischief potentially causing loss or hurt damage to life. Well, he's because a... property, it's maximum 10 years for 5,000 mm -hmm. and over, maximum two years for 5,000 and under. But if it's to life or someone's person, it's maximum life. Just 20 years. This is not the COVID sneezing stuff. He is th his things on those ones were already pardoned. This is the big stuff. 
So this is not about when she says, I've always sought amnesty for those charged with non-violent correlate. This is not that when it mm. comes to Pavlovsky. And then as for her call to Justice Minister Tyler Sandro, she said she was seeking advice. Quote, as I have explained before, differently than I'm explaining now, I'm sure. But as I've explained before, I spoke with Minister Shandro, who's an experienced lawyer, and I was very interested in his advice on what could legally be done about this, she wrote. But um, she said, uh, but the, well, Shandro, she says, Trusser wrote that Smith called Shandro on January 6th in the evening. During the call, the premier didn't advise Shandro that she had a personal telephone call with Pawlowski before calling Shandro. Trusser writes and started the conversation by stating she did not know if this was appropriate to call him. I don't know if I should be doing this. This is what Danielle says. She advised that he indicated that she could continue as the deputy minister shielded him from the COVID-related cases. While she says that she started to talk about the cases generally at some point, she turned to Mr. Pawlowski's court. So I was talking about the cases generally, and then at some point the conversation turned to Pawlowski. It's important to note that this call was only a few hours after the Pawlowski call. So basically she had the Pawlowski call and she just got right on the phone to Chandra. Mm, immediately, yeah. Okay. And this is her version. I'm just talking about COVID related stuff. He advised me that he never felt any such conversation what if, would be appropriate. What if, what if? And that he almost certainly would have not indicated that it was okay to proceed. He remembered that there was a brief conversation generally about COVID related prosecutions, but Premier Smith turned very quickly to Pavlovsky's case, which Minister Sandro understood was the reason for the call. So mm-hmm. he has a different recollection. Interesting, huh? Mm-hmm. 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 And he's like, not exactly a stand-up guy either. No, but uh, he's like, uh, no, uh, she called me and uh, she pretty much went into it right away. And it was very clear that that's why she was calling me. Yeah. <laughs> so she's trying to make it seem, oh, yeah, it's just something that kind of sort of came up in this large sort of general conversation. No, that was not the case at all. Yeah. Shandro also recalled that during the call, but not at the beginning of the call, Smith asked him about the extent to which he could get involved in a prosecution. Smith pointed out he was the attorney general and seemed to suggest something that was influenced by a letter sent by Ezra Levant, who runs the right-wing company Rebel. In response, Chandra recalled that he tried to explain the role of the attorney general and said while the Crown Prosecution Service is under his authority, he could not personally get involved in files or speak to prosecutors. He made the point that there's a separation between his office and the prosecutors. Mr. Chandra stated that Premier Smith was passive-aggressive. Oh, really? Throughout the call, she asked him specifically if there was anything he anything he could do about Mr. Pozlowski's case. She wanted him to make it go away, although she did not direct him to do so. She was concerned about a press conference that Mr. Pozlowski said he was going to have and how bad the optics would be for the party, which is the press conference he's going to have tomorrow. That should be interesting. Isn't it amazing how it all just cycles back? Mr. Sir Chandros told her there was nothing he could be, he could do, and she accepted his advice. There were no further conversations between Chandro and the premier on this subject. So I'm guessing he said, uh, listen here, woman. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop. Um, so this is a mess. This oh, yeah. is a mess. And the report's conclusion, uh, she recommended that all new members of the Legislative Assembly attend mandatory training upon election about the structure of Canadian government and the roles of the three branches. So okay. civics. Take a civics course. Ouch. Take a basic civics course. Ouch. That's really troublesome. And when people were worried about this ethics commissioner, of the 85 requests for investigation sent to Trussler in 2021-2022, she conducted only one probe, according to the commissioner's last annual report. Yes. That investigation focused on education ministers Adriana Lagrange and cleared her of inappropriate contact tied to a 150000 contract for students' reusable masks granted by her ministry to a company in her Red Deer riding. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I, I've one. To... One. One all last year out of 85. That's pretty bad. To investigate. I've got a, a quote here from Frank Zappa that I'm going to change a few words in it Okey dokey. to apply it to today's time frame and what's going on in the country. He said this in 1985 on CNN's Crossfire, and I'm changing words so that it will, uh, mm-hmm. it will translate for 2023 because the words I change just apply to Canada. The biggest threat to Canada today is not China. It's moving Canada towards a fascist theocracy. And everything that's happened during the Harper years 
is steering us right down that pipe. When you have a government that prefers a certain moral code derived from a certain religion and that moral code turns into legislation to suit one certain religious point of view, and if that ha code happens to be very, very right wing, well, mm. I changed a few words there to suit modern times, but guess what? Mm -hmm. Literally, those words, you can plug and unplug and it's the same damn thing. He was talking about Reagan and what was going on in the 80s because he said that in 1985, but you can translate it to 2023 by changing mm -hmm. a few words around like I just did. And it's no damn different. Mm -hmm. uh, tiny piece of good news before we go out, Mr. Grizzly. Sure. I like, I like good news. Um, we wondered if it would happen. And it And did. it is. She's going for it again. Good for e. her. Jean Carroll decided that she's going to sue Trump again one day after he found he was found guilty. He went to that CNN town hall and defamed her again. She slapped him with another lawsuit. Now in the first lawsuit, she demanded no money whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the jury found that she should get 5 million. This yeah. time she's asking for 10. Good. I hope she gets 20. Good. Go, mm -hmm. go girl, go. Sue him into oblivion. Uh, the guy's an idiot and he can't keep his mouth shut. And this should be standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. GOP conservatives that Pierre sue him every sue him. single freaking time. Yep. Every lie, every misstatement, sue him for defamation, make it cost, make it expensive, make it hurt. It's the you know that 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 old abuser talk, right? Mm -hmm. It's the only thing she understands. Mm -hmm. Sue them into oblivion. It's the only thing they understand. That's right. It's the only thing. It is. It's true. I mean, if you go after him for, well, I mean, I know because of parliamentary privilege, he, you can't pursue him for saying the liberals started the wildfires in Alberta. But couldn't a citizen go after him for that? Because that is defamatory language. Mm -hmm. And and it's stochastic terrorism, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. It's the very definition of stochastic terrorism. Mm -hmm. Because since that saying, it, people had been been literally across the province of Alberta accusing the NDP of doing it, but he came right out and said the Liberal government did it. In the House Ooh, of Commons, Yeah, we heard him say it. Yeah, People have gone on the bandwidth saying the Liberals started the fires to help the NDP. Yeah, and now they're saying, well, what he meant is because they were controlled burns by Park Canada, so that's why you're saying started by the government. No, no, that's not what started by your government means. No, no. No, because he responded you're at home to what and you're the minister at was home saying. Starting by your government does not mean, oh, it was a Parks Canada control pool. <laughs> he would have said no. that. Yeah. No, so, no, he was. That's stochastic terrorism. Yep. And seriously, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Was something rough and sandpapery. Right. Yeah. Well, kids. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Podcast. We hope you love listening to us because we loved making this for you. Yes, we do. Oh, trust me, I get up early enough. <laughs> Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. Let your peeps know about us because democracy is something that you do. Um, please, again, uh, our challenge, write a letter to your MP saying that uh, you want our foreign uh, ownership of media laws returned back to uh, not allow majority ownership by a foreign nation. Yeah. And when you do, send us a little message at our email, truenorthegerbeaver at gmail.com to let us know that you have. And uh, let's see if we can do something because, uh, as Mr. Grizzly said, if uh, three emails in New Brunswick was enough to uh, get the government to do a policy review that could actually make the lives of rainbow children much worse, certainly 100 from kits or a thousand from kits would certainly put that on the agenda. I would assume. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. uh, so let's try it. Let's see if it works. Uh, and let us know if you have, like I said, because we love to hear from you. So please reach us on our Facebook, True North Eager Beaver, Twitter at True Eager, or by email, True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. You can subscribe to us via our pod page, podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver, all in lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that means we will come to you as soon as we have something straight off the bandwidth. All right. Well, not really straight off the bandwidth, fresh off the bandwidth. Well, maybe semi straight off the bandwidth. I mean, we do have our token <laughs> heterosexual here. <laughs> Christ, 
why not also subscribe to our True North Eco-Reaver Media Incorporated YouTube channel? That helps us out big time. Uh, when we get to a thousand, we're able to monetize this and everything we make goes back into the show so we can make a better product for you. So if you're there, please subscribe. If you're there, please make like Kit Elaine and smash that button. And if you happen to listening, be listening on another platform, if you could take the time to stroll to our YouTube page and subscribe, that would help us all very much. That would be great. Thank you. We can't do this without your kind and generous support. So if you feel that we've done a particularly good show for you today, well, if you're watching, you can scan that QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head, and that will take you to our emergency hot chocolate Guinness coffee and Caesar fund, which keeps us hydrated and keeps us uh, motivated to do more work. And if you're listening, well, if you let your digits go to ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, one word, lowercase letters, that's where you will find the place where you can contribute to our fund. And we appreciate every, every nickel Thank you very much. Ah, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it can be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom for us before we go? I, I don't know if this is as much words of wisdom as it is an observation, but I had somebody recently um, uh, respond to a message on Twitter and, 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 and DM'd me saying like, so uh, if your life is so great, why are you asking for money? I'm like, what? He goes, well, you got a coffee page for donations and this. And I go, yeah, we, we do this. We create content. We would like to get paid for the content we create. Please tell me what is wrong with that. I need money. Don't you need money? It costs money to create. We just want to cover our costs. And that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> Yep. They were trying to make fun of me because of the coffee page and the fact that we ask for donations. I'm like, it, it takes time and money to put this together. Yep. I have the same thing on my, on my personal feed. I have like kindness is power. Yeah. Whenever I stand up for something, I say like, this is bullshit. Like this is, oh, how are you supposed to, I thought you're supposed to be kind. Oh yes. I forgot. I'm sorry. It's unkind for me to point out that you're being a prick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Some days you just can't put up with that sort of behavior and you gotta, gotta put them in their place. Yeah, really. It's like, oh, really? You're, you're having a problem with my lack of kindness, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because from where I'm looking, I'm seeing a whole other set of problems. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, it's chaos be kind, except for Nazis punch them. And, and for people who are not kind. Yeah. If people are not being kind, is it for me to point out, say, you know what, you're being a little bit of a dick. Well, that's not very kind. It's a declarative statement of fact. You're being a dick. <laughs> Kindness has nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's not mean if it's true. <laughs> it's just a statement of fact. Yeah. It's just a statement of fact. I'm sorry if that bothers you. All right, kids. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, please. Roll the credits, sir. Just before I do that, I want to post oh, this. Yes, 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 please. Thing here. Premier Danielle Smith blasts media <laughs> for old comments she made 30 minutes ago. That's from October of 2022. You took them out of context and you misinterpreted me. I never said that. You why just why said are it. you showing me the words I said? Yeah. Th that okay. wasn't me. Let's get out of here. <laughs> You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, Hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind.
Uh, uh, Mr. Grizzly, before we go, your eager beaver has an obsession at the moment. Who, As you know, that? I'm Rainbow, and Rainbow people really love Kylie Minogue. Oh, is it Kylie? Wow, I didn't even recognize yeah. her. She's got a new song out called Padam Padam. I highly recommend it. It's a banger. Is it I'm Bollywood obsessed. like? No, it's not. Padam Padam is a lot of people. It's actually Bosnian people. The Bosnian people thought it was she was singing in, in her lang, in, in their language because it's actually a Bosnian word. But no, oh. Padam Padam for this is the the sound of your heartbeat. Padam Padam. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, great video. Really great song. Highly recommended. Treat yourself to something fun. All right, kids. Okay. Bye. See ya.